Guys, welcome back to another Arsenio Buck Show. As always, guys, this is your host, Arsenio, bringing to you today how to find satisfaction in your job. Oh, my God. This is a very, very controversial uh, chapter. Uh, I'm going to break down three things that have happened in my life, and then I'm just going to tell you what Napoleon Hill said in the beginning, but this is so hard to actually come to grips with. It really is. I'm going to give my story, but first let me talk about what Napoleon Hill said. He said, you know what, no matter what the job may be, boss or employee, plant manager or factory worker, worker, doctor or nurse, lawyer or secretary, teacher or student, housewife or maid, you owe to yourself to have satisfaction in your job as long as you have it. That's all I'm going to say. That's really all I'm going to say, but you know what? As long as you have it. But the thing is, what if you're getting threatened, right? So a lot of you are like, you know what, my boss puts me through hell and he's like, if you don't like it, quit. You know, I'm sure a lot of you have dealt with that before in your life. I mean, uh, this is probably what I've been, I got pushed to the brink at one of my very first jobs in uh, Sydney, Australia. I was working at a dental pediatric practice, Crow's Nest, out there just north of Sydney. And you know what? It was difficult. You know, when I first started working there, there was uh, Nymphia, okay, she was one of the pediatric dentists. You had uh, Susan Shea. She was like a Taiwanese-Australian, wonderful individual. Very, very pleasant to work with, and Nymphia was too. Uh, She had an Indian heritage, but again, Australian. This is why I love Australia, because, you know, they have so many different heritages and stuff like that. Um, But the, and then I had, what is it, Jay, uh, Dr. Jay. I still can't remember, but she was an oral surgeon there. You had Omar, who was the, what is it, the endo, endodontist, the root canal therapy uh, dentist. Then you had a general dentist named Peter. And there were a couple of others, but those were the main ones. But there was one, the main lady, the pediatric dentist, the number one. She was a monster. Her name was Philippa Sawyer. And you know what? When I first started working with her, I didn't know exactly, I don't know when that, 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 that tie changed. Now, the thing is, it depends on the days. Right, so it's like, okay, Arsenio, Wednesday you're working with Philippa all day. Okay, uh, Tuesday you're working with Susan. Now, the days I work with Susan or Nymphia, we have very pleasant days together because we know how to joke, we know how to laugh, et cetera, et cetera. The thing is, when you're a dental assistant, they kind of shove you aside like the bastard child. They kind of shove you aside like the annoying cousin at a party. You know, they don't include you in some of the conversations with the parents. If the parent asks you a question, they answer it like you're the goddamn, like you're the guinea pig. You know what I mean? But Philippa, Philippa Sawyer, she was an evil person. I don't know when I actually saw it in her. I remember I moved to, what is it? I moved to Australia. I mean, I'm sorry. I moved to Sydney probably around the third week of August of 2011. And I remember I quit that job somewhere like at the beginning or second week of October. I went through hell. Man, you know what? Every time I went home, I was like, oh, it was such a breath of, sh- of fresh air. When I would go out to a restaurant and go eat something... For, uh, you know, lunchtime and stuff like that. I, it would be just so refreshing. You know, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be around people. And, of course, this is a video that I'm probably going to make a, uh, a Facebook Live with. Because Facebook Live, Instagram Live, you know, Periscope, you name it. Because I realized that I wanted to be around people who were conversationalists rather than just being a slave in a goddamn dental office. But Philippa, she put people into depression. She put a, she had a nurse crying, a nurse who could make probably more than a hundred thousand. What is it? What is a hundred thousand? Yeah. A hundred thousand a year. Wonderful individual. Me and her, we would have some of the most, the best conversations I've ever had with an Australian period. There were other people such as, um, what is it? Uh, the, the practice manager. There was another girl that was below the practice manager. They would cry. The next thing you know, I said enough is enough. There was one day that Philippa, I did whatever I could. I was running. I was doing this. I was doing that. She would steal. I mean, she was a vehement, just disgusting human being. And I remember I went to, I, I think her name was Lucy. Yeah, her name was Lucy, the main practice manager. I said, I'm done. Two week notice. I'm finished. She's like, oh, oh, are you sure? Were you just angry yesterday? I said, I'm absolutely sure. I don't give a fuck if I die out here in Australia. I got to get the hell out of this job. Guys, there was no way, PMA or not, being positive or not, there was no way I was going to find some sort of satisfaction within that job. I need to leave. And you know what? When I left, my very first uh, dental tent job was in the middle of CBD, uh, you know, center, the center business district out there in uh, 
what is it, out there in Sydney, Australia. And I remember it was a dental practice. It was a Russian lady. She was gorgeous, by the way. She's like 45, but I was like, dude, I'll take you to work. Ha <laughs> ha! Anyways, guys, sorry. But you know what? She was a wonderful individual. She ended up saying, hey, do you have a Facebook? I'd love to add you. I might come to Vegas. Da, 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 da. We were friends for a while. You know what I mean? Uh, that was my very first job after. I mean, I went to so many different places. I mean, I went to like Avalon. You know, I went to the Mona Vale, the Palm Beach. I started enjoying my time just a little bit out there. I remember one of my very first jobs, they sent me to King's Cross. This is the notorious at night for... Uh, for, yeah, for, yeah, yeah, for, uh, obviously, prostitution and stuff like that, but there was a lady who I'm still friends with today, Lois Semke, she's a new, a Kiwi, and she is in the best shape of her life at the age of 70, I think, and you know what, I met some of the most un- wonderful individuals, guys, when you actually take out the nasty, you take out the nasty, you purge all that disgusting stuff that you are around, in terms of your environment, in terms of your job, you will find satisfaction, And that's the fear. See, we have that fear of saying, you know what, I might not find another job. I might not find another job, but you will find another job. It's just the simple fact is that you're scared. You're scared that you might not find another job. Guys, I was floating around as a dental temp for the next seven months until my visa expired. I really was. And the more I went out and did this and did that... It was tough. It was tough. I remember I only had $2,000, which is actually pretty good. But in Australia, that's not very good at all to my name because I was paying rent. I think my rent every, what is it, every two weeks was like 400 US dollars, which is pretty, which is pretty crazy. But it's very, very, well, like it's half of what I'm doing right now. But yeah. Um, so, guys, again, I had to leave that job where it was going to crush me. I was stressed. I was depressed. I was messaging my mom. Okay, I couldn't call her on the phone. I couldn't video chat with her because, of course, technology wasn't the best seven years ago. It was still developing. Now, of course, I could do that. But she's like, so, and I love my mom's words. She was like, you know what? So what? You're going to give up? You're going to come back here and do what? What are you going to do? Go back to school? You're going to get another job? What are you going to do? You're just going to give up? You did. You went through all that and saved all that money just to do this, huh? And I was like, damn, my mom's harsh. She don't want me back. I can't believe it. My mom hates me. No, she was saying don't give up. Because some sorry-ass human being is treating you like shit. How about you quit a job and get another job? And I did. You know, my mom, she was a great inspiration during that time, too. So then Chantaburi Thailand. You guys already know this story. Evil Thai girl. I already noticed the evil once I met her. It was in downtown, of course, uh, Bangkok. And I remember the first time I met her and the eyes she gave me and everything. You know, because most Thai people, they're not going to give you a disgusting look. Unless they're of a high society or maybe they're low society. The middle class never gives you a dirty look. But that look she gave me, she never even said hello. I was like, hey, how you doing? She's like, hey. And you know what? She was verbally threatening me before I even came to Thailand. I already saw. I already knew what she was before I actually came here. And so... You know, when I came here, she was exactly the person who I thought she would be, evil as hell. And I saw this probably within the last five years of my life of knowing her. She would just disappear. She would get angry quickly, this and that, and then she would come back around, and then this, so many different things. And so it was, it was, it was basically my life or just go through slavery. There was another teacher there by the name of Ray. Ray, I didn't understand his story. You know, Ray had a beautiful daughter and he had a Thai wife. The thing is, I thought this was common. Obviously, if you see this in Thailand, you know what's going on. All right. Now, am I saying all Thai men, you know, all older men are like this? No, but I know, I know what I see when I see it. Right. So he was a wife to us. He escaped whatever had happened back there in England, having a wonderful job. He came here. He married a doctor. Apparently, she was a doctor or a physician. And she had a compulsive gambling problem. She ended up like throwing away probably the three to five thousand US dollars in one night on the World Cup back in two thousand and what was it, two thousand and fourteen. That was the last time I heard from him. He always used to argue with the same boss that actually employed me and who was evil. He stayed there and he went through hell. The next thing you know, he ended up disappearing. Who knows where he went? But this is this this is well, I didn't want to go through that. I got a fair sense and I said, you know what, I got a bell. So I snuck out of there one morning. I packed all my stuff up. Ray dropped me off at the bus stop. I went to Bangkok, and from there, I flew to the south uh, in terms of going to Nakhon Si, Tamara. And then, of course, guys, again, you cannot find satisfaction in a place where you only had probably four or five very happy days, and the rest were absolutely, they, they were just absolute hell. It was from the teachers, and it was, of course, you know, from, you, you know, the teachers that would call me a Nico, which is equivalent to calling me the N-word. 
to the students, to the students' parents who would give me some of the, oh my God. Do you know what I'm saying? This was the beginning of my hell. And it's beautiful actually looking back on it and seeing where I am today. And you know, of course, my last job. And I wrote a list of this, of course, on my blog. You guys could check that out. But see, these are some of the things that were said at my last job. New Education World Language Center out here in Bangkok, Thailand. I can say, it when I, you know, I'm just going to drop names because it doesn't really matter for you guys out there. But again, for the Thai people who are looking for a language center, stay away. Uh, lots of sex tours, wife tours, and pedophiles work here. And I could see it. Actually, I even work with some of them at my present job right now. But these are some of the bullet points, man. Bullet points I had about, I wrote down eight. These are some of the comments I got. To be honest, it's hard to market if we use a black guy. Why did you put the black teacher in the photo? To be honest, he's already black, so it's difficult to give him work already. I don't think you're good enough. I don't want a black teacher. Black bastard. White men are better. Your grammar is terrible. I heard this from the students, the teachers, the staff, the managers, and the freaking head of the entire place. Why did I end up staying there for so long? Like, how can I develop a positive mental attitude through that? Like... Is that even possible? Is it even possible to develop anything from that? No, it's impossible. There's no way I could get over that. Like, and when I actually got those comments and when I went through that hell in 2016, that was the last month I actually made uh, a six figure in one month in terms of Thai bot, okay? So, no, it wasn't in terms of freaking U.S. dollars. Um, but six fi- if it was in terms of U.S. dollars, I would have quit the job already. Um... But it was in terms of Thai bot. So I hurry up and I, um, you know, ended up, of course, do, you know, making this amount of money. I'm like, I don't want to leave because of these comments. I want to think, you, you know, I think I'm going to be able to change this and that and this and that. And you know what? I ended up going back to that same province that I received all those dirty ass comments from to teach on a project. And that night, the marketing director, he was the one that told me, hey, you know what? It's hard to market a black guy. It's easier to market with the white teacher. Companies want white teachers. Welcome to Thailand. This is Thailand. Now you guys understand. See, it was, a, it was like a... And, and just being through all the things I had gone through before, boy, it is amazing to actually look back and say, there's no way I could have developed that positive mental attitude. There were some times I went to work and it was good for five days. The manager was all talking to me. At my last job, at my last job, New Education World, she was all talking to me. Then she would just disappear for three months. And I still remember when I got removed from Toshiba, okay, the company. Uh, I will never buy their products again, by the way, uh, like they care. But I got removed from this company, and they cited, you know, saying that uh, some of the most – I've never heard of any – they were all lies. There were three things, and there were three lies. But, of course, the British nasty, pompous, monster, vehement, just insidious, despicable human being, he was the one. That stood there and said, I don't think you're good enough. And these verbal threats. Right in front of the Packers manager who had always had my back. She didn't say anything for four months. And then finally, I took one of the staff aside. And I said, hey, um, uh, Fong. Fong was her name. I said, hey, can you get that uh, resignation letter from uh, the lady inside? Uh, yeah, because I'm going to be quitting. And she knew right then. She was like, hey, I think you should t- you know, talk to the manager. I was like, there's nothing to say to that motherfucker. She was the one that actually could have stood up for me in the wake of that moly, mole-infested British guy. And she didn't. She didn't. The sex tourist, the wife tourist, yeah. She did nothing. And, of course, she sat down. She's like, oh, maybe you're mad. Maybe you have something going on in your head. I said, no, this is is best for me. Maybe I could switch to part-time. But you know what? It's either full-time or no time. And (laughs) you know what? I kept just giving myself false hope that this place would deliver funny because of course a couple days or a couple weeks before I actually quit and just stopped going there in general I was going to cancel all my classes she came in she's like hey Kung Pun which is the very very racist lady that actually said why do you why did you put the black man in the picture she's like oh she actually said that um um if you have a work permit you could work here on weekends and I'm like oh okay well I don't have one right now so no and then that was it I was like good Arsenio you don't want to stay here For that bullshit-ass money per hour, you're going to stay here? You know, guys, we give ourselves false hope sometimes. We keep pleading to ourselves that, you know what, everything is going to be good. That's the paradigm. That's what Bob Proctor said. He said, you know what, we have those feelings that we just sit down and we say, you know what, I think everything is going to be all right. Everything will be all right. You know what, I'm just going to stay here. I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to do that. But the thing is, it's never, and I mean it's never all right. 
You could develop whatever positive mental attitude you can. You could try to attract and visualize all you want like the movie The Secret said. Listen, when you're de- dealing with rape, sexism, religionism, uh, egoism, racism, whatever you want, uh, any kind of ism, you got to get the hell out of there. There's no way of, oh, hey, you know what, I'm going to break the company's culture, I'm going to create a new culture. Man, the culture has already been created by the main guy. Another job, I remember he said, oh, Arsenio, you can't teach TOEIC. Um, or he told the other guy, the head teacher, his name was, oh, I forgot his name, at Language Express. This is another language center. I work part-time because, of course, this new education world, they weren't giving me full-time hours. So I said, fuck you guys, I'm out. So I was working part-time at this place, and, you know, the guy was like, hey, Arsenio, um, so I can't give you the TOEIC class because the CEO said, the students don't want a black teacher, and the teacher, the, the students don't want a black teacher, and so they would attract a lot of Japanese students. And honestly, the looks that I would get in that specific place, oh my god, like, whoa, from Japanese students. You know, there are some specific areas. You know, and of course, working in Japan. I mean, not working in Japan. I'm sorry, working at Toshiba. Because a lot of Japanese people would come from Japan and go to Toshiba. I remember I walked into the lobby one day. There were a group of ten, eight meeting people having a discussion. A girl saw me. She hurried up and grabbed her purse off the couch. And I said, welcome to Asia. I know exactly how a lot of people operate. You guys, I went to Hong Kong. Remember immigration? They said, oh, black man, come here. I mean, it's just how it, it's just how it is. But am I going to let that... Am I going to let... That dying paradigm and that perception of a dying human being affect me and what I really am and what I'm what I truly represent myself to be. No, uh, uh. See, guys, that place was doomed from the beginning. The other companies I worked at, like Marigot, I oh my god, oh boy, guys. And this is why I sit here today from the Toic comments. Whereas I'm now teaching Toic online and I'm gonna create an ebook and so many other things. And I create TOEIC videos on Instagram. You name it. I do everything. To all these things I've endured, man, how was I able to overcome it? So I'm sitting here at 8.30 a.m. this morning. And I'm asking myself, wow, Arsenio, how did you do it? Job satisfaction or not, there's no way that you were going to be able to overcome any of that foolishness. But you stuck through it for whatever reason you did. And you know what? You quit at the perfect time. And then, you know, the first three months of the year, January, February, March, of course, I did the Wheel of Life just recently. Boy, you ended up saying, you know what? Okay, I'm going to get through all of this. All of the places. Oh, my God. Same same thing that I've talked about in the last 20 minutes. Hey, black teacher, black teacher, black teacher. You know what? Let me just get my students from all around the world. How about that? How about I stop working at garbage places that don't pay me enough? And of course, this stems from a couple of comments that were just made two days ago. And then there was a teacher translating. He's like, hey, uh, one of the students complained about it. it was, I, I forgot what it was. But I was like, oh, here we go again. Four years of complaints. Arsenio, when is enough enough? When are you going to stop getting complaints? How about you get your own students and create your own company? And that's exactly what I'm doing right now. See, guys, there comes a time where... You have to ask yourself, enough is enough at the job, place, or whatever. How can you find satisfaction in your job? By becoming a solopreneur. If you have a client that's just seemingly complaining all the time, you send that client an email and say, you know what, we're no longer going to do this with you. We're going to refund you, blah, 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 blah. Best of luck to you in your search. Done. All the best. Or best regards, comma, signature at the bottom. This is the only way. A lot of people, they seemingly think that, you know, let let me just keep doing it over and over and over. That's called insanity. And if you keep doing that, you will fall into a deep place. I assure you that. So what I'm telling you guys today, you can develop that positive mental attitude all you want. But now I've just reached another pinnacle moment in my career. Whereas, of course, I just got offered an unbelievable job from an Irishman. And, well, it doesn't really matter who he is, but from a fellow teacher who I used to work with in the past. And now this could be the next big step in terms of me just making some residual income. Of course, online being here in the comfortability of my home. Or do I have to live in Thailand anymore? I don't. So now it's like I'm in a huge crossroad. Because if there's one more complaint, I quit. I'm done. I can't do it anymore. I don't care about this project, that project. Everything is remotely done through my computer now. 
do I need a video? I'll just leave. I, I just I can't do it anymore. I just can't. And it doesn't matter about the project here, the project there. Oh, you know what? I got offered a principal job and this and that. I just can't deal with ignorance anymore. I want to be my own and have my own business and attract my own open-minded customers. I can no longer do and deal with the garbage I've been dealing with for 20 years. So, guys, how to find satisfaction in your job? Well, you know what? You need to come to grips with yourself and ask yourself an honest question. Are you happy? If you're not, you could try to make it happy all you want. But you know what? If it's the environment and it's the culture, it's finished. Get the hell out of there. Get yourself a peace of mind or else you fall apart. Your life falls apart. Everything will go right down the drain. And then you'll head straight into depression. And depression, that's the worst place you want to be. So guys, with that being said, you got a lot of thinking to do. I'm going to try to figure out what Napoleon Hill is trying to get out of this chapter. But honestly... How to find satisfaction in your job? By quitting. That's satisfaction. This is your host, Arsenio, as usual. Over and out.